and there should be a thing saying we're going live or something. Is it your voice? Is it recording? I'm used to somebody just like clapping a thing and then like I know yeah. him, but yeah. when you're trying to do it yourself, it's a whole different experience. I don't know. Maybe we'll just get like a student or something. Yeah, Maybe Safia, yeah, yeah. you oh, could just Safia. Yeah, sure. Fill thank it you. For thank, you. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Well, hello and welcome to Lillian Osborne Presents The Theory of Relativity. I'm Brooke Hodson. I'm Matthew Blackwell. And I'm Hannah Kahn. We are the three directors for the show that you're about to see. So come on in with us. Well, it's been over a year since the COVID-19 pandemic started, and in that year, we've had no theater, unfortunately, happening here at uh, Lillian Osborne. We had to cancel our last two shows, Legally Blonde and Almost Maine, which was heartbreaking. Although this impacted our students and their ability to perform, this year, we were determined to do what artists do best, come up with a creative compromise. With lockdowns, unexpected school shutdowns, quarantines, you name it, we met every challenge we could head on. We're happy to tell you that this is not a performance that's just directed by us three teacher directors. It was also led by our amazing technical theater students and passionate musical theater students. So, the students this year had the challenge of not only performing, but creating. All of the sets, lights, and costumes that you're about to see were created by our wonderful tech theater students. And our musical theater students had the opportunity to block and choreograph their own numbers for the show. And then on top of all of that, we weren't even allowed to sing in the building, so we had to get creative again, and uh, we figured out a way to have students create home recording studios and pre-record all of their vocals from home. This would be a great opportunity to say thank you so much to our parents and for allowing your child to belt ungodly high notes in your household. Thank you. One thing that was really important to us is we wanted to create as close to a live performance experience as possible. So, what you are about to see was all filmed in one single take. That means no cuts, no breaks, no intermissions. Uh, which is crazy. But before we get that show on the road, we would like to acknowledge that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place, meeting ground, and travel route for the Cree, Salto, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Dakota Sioux peoples. We want to acknowledge all the many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people whose footprints have marked these grounds for centuries. This show truly is a labor of love and passion from our fine arts department here. We chose this show because its theme is what we need right now, connection. Please make sure you stay tuned, pass the credits for some extra musical theater talent. Follow me. Without any further ado, we present to you the theory of relativity. Enjoy. Person A. Person B. A is walking toward B at a rate of three miles per hour and B is walking toward A at a rate of two miles per hour. How fast does B perceive A to be walking? Newton's first law of motion, a body in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless an external force is applied to it. I am standing still on the Earth. The Earth spins at a rate of 1,070 miles per hour. The Earth orbits the Sun at a rate of 67,000 miles per hour. The Sun travels through the galaxy at a rate of 490,000 miles per hour. I am not standing still. When you're courting a nice girl, an hour seems like a second. When you sit on a red hot cinder, a second seems like an hour. That's relativity. Albert Einstein. Newton's second law of motion. A change of motion is proportional to and is made in the direction of the force applied. Person A. Person B. If A's position is seven miles from B and A is walking at a rate of four miles per hour. And B is walking at a rate of five miles per hour at a 45 degree angle to the path of person A. How, how soon, soon will, will they, they meet? meet? And how will the path of each person be altered by that contact? If a tree falls in the forest. Newton's third law of motion. And it doesn't every the action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Does it? Only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. Albert Einstein. I am rubber and you're glue. What you say bounces off me and sticks to you. I exist only in observed. 
I am nothing without you. Complex mysteries appear. There are paradoxes here to undo. And now, relatively ah. speaking, something's relatively. Good evening, Dr. O'Hara. I'm glad you could make it. I know it's frustrating getting to Midtown at this time of day. The uptown and R is a pain. Not to mention the rain. But thank you for coming, sir. I've got something to say. <sighs> I'm allergic to cats. That's part of the reason I asked to have dinner with you. I'm allergic to cats. I know, it's hardly a life-threatening medical hullabaloo. See, 
When I was born, they expected me later So I spent two months in an incubator Ever since that, I can't be near a cat I can tell by your smirk You think this is silly and borderline phobic, perhaps But this innocent quirk can cause such a violent reaction, my lung could collapse. So bear with me, sir, this is nothing sordid. Your patience, I promise, will be rewarded. I'm really not bats, just allergic to cats. But Julie, Julie loves cats. As you know, they're her passion and joy. She knits them wool sweaters and crochets them hats For their birthday she sews them their own special toy There's Meowser, Miss Mew, Cookie Puss, Alexander The couch is a playground of pee and dander So I cough and I wheeze, pop a fistful of Claritin D's Try to hide before anyone sees I'm allergic to cats For over a year I've hidden from Julie a genophylactic display Oh, cause she's such a dear If she knew how cats and me suffer, she'd give them away But she is my world, I live for her truly Julie loves cats, and I love Julie So she tickles her toes, and a smile as my throat starts to close But I vow that she'll never suppose I'm allergic to cats Well, Dr. O'Hara, I fear that I've buried the headline The point of the story is murky, I have to concede I hope that I've shown you tonight I love your daughter with all of my might So humbly I stand Asking you for her marital hand what a life will be blissful and grand With Julie and Meowser, Miss Mew, Cookie Puss, Alexander, the Dander, the Pea, and me Cake. The boy I love made me a cake with his own two hands. I don't have a technique for a cake. I have a technique for a door. You can open a door with your elbows. The right fabric and a little pressure and you're good. Soak doesn't work. No friction. I developed the technique in public bathrooms. I had no choice. I'd wash my hands, dry them, go to the door, grab the handle, and wash them again. Wash, dry, door. Wash, dry, door. Wash, dry. You get it. It's called a handle because others have handled it with their hands. Hands have been... I have no control over where those hands have been. That's why I have the elbow technique. See, the boy I love made me a cake with his hands. I don't have a technique for a cake. The ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter is known as pi. Pi equals 3.14. If I bring her one red rose, she will dance with me till dawn. If I bring her one red rose, I can hold her in my arms. If I bring her one red rose... <sighs> Roses are foolish, dancing's a bore Love is a concept that wise men ignore Numbers are perfect like pi equals 3.14 Dreams are unstable, awaken, they're gone An unscientific phenomenon Numbers are certain like pi is 3.14 one. What could be clearer than pi is 3.141? I'm Jenny. I'm Sarah. She's Sarah. 
she's Jen. We've been best friends forever since we were ten. Met at ballet class and ever since then, we became inseparable. The damage was irreparable. Jen's like my sister and Sarah's like mine. Friends till the end of the line. Had nothing much in common. Loved horses, loved shoes, but we were attached at the hip. Jen was like a goddess, my mentor and muse. She was a nerd and a drip. But we would be together every hour of the day. People would see us and say, It's Jenny and Sarah, two peas in a pod. Well, if one P was perfect and one P was odd, first string and spare on the volleyball squad. Happy and gregarious, my thrills were just vicarious. She'd point the spotlight, she'd bask in the shine. Friends till the end of the line. My skin was just like porcelain, hers was all zits. My pores were perpetually blocked. I developed early, she had no tits. My cupboard was woefully stocked. Why would I be seen with such a social refugee? As you always looked good next to me. That's right. So we were Jenny and Sarah, a vulgar display. The queen of the prom and her weird protege. I star on red lights in the school cabaret. I mean, have you heard Sarah sing? Oh, golly, it's embarrassing. Oh, we were contrary forces to somehow combine. Friends till the end of the line. Then something crazy happened right after 12th grade. That summer I blossomed and bloomed. I stepped into the sunlight. After years in the shade, and a beautiful swan was exhumed. Meanwhile, I was working at the local Dairy Queen and ballooned up to plus sign sixteen. Um, Jenny, eighteen. It's just so delicious. We both showed up at college and no need to pretend I was popular right off the bat And everyone was asking Sarah, who is your friend? The one who's so interesting? Fat All this malice aimed at Jenny was quite startling and new So I did what all best friends would do I said, I'm Sarah, she's Jenny. We used to be close, now she's desperate and clingy and sort of morose. I heard she gobbles peanut buster part face by the gross. In all the world is there a sight more tragic than this parasite? So that is our story, and ain't it divine? Friends till the end of the cold bitter I guess this is the end of the line. Person A leaves home at age 18 and walks west against the rotation of the Earth at a rate of three miles per hour. If she continues to walk in a straight line, how old will she be when she returns home? Person B leaves home at a rate of can't get out of here fast enough. How massive a force will it take to change Person B's trajectory? Person C is standing still. If two equal but opposing forces are applied to Person C, one internal and one external, which one will he succumb to? He 
eternally grateful for all that they've gave up for me. I belong to a long line of men, all electricians by trade. My grandfather first. My father then, so proud of the business they made. A mantle is claimed, a torch will be passed, making a family like a sea last. So here I stand with my future ordained, and a life that is planned out for me. Cruising along at college, first semester winding down, and you're finally over first semester shock. Now the holidays are approaching, so it's back to your old town, back to solid ground, your family, your rock. Yeah, there's nothing like heading homeward to clear the mental fog. The photographs in your memory never blur. So you're thinking about your parents, your sister Beth and Spike, your dog. They're frozen in your head the way they were. Cause there's a footprint you left there, indelible and deep. 
It's the core of your identity, the principles you keep, your footprint, your history, it's who you are. So you run to hug your parents, and Beth calls you a geek, and when you yell for Spike, your dad says, son, we had to put him down last week. So you find yourself back at college, kind of shaken, but okay. And you're quickly swept up again by freshman year. There's your roommate who hogs the bathroom, a new paper due each day, and your part-time job as a campus store cashier. Then it's suddenly spring vacation, and it's home you go once more. And it's hard to believe that months have come and gone. You see that familiar driveway, and you open that front door With that overwhelming feeling coming on There's a footprint you left here, permanent and real It's your constant, your anchor, unbendable like steel Your footprint, your history, it's who you are And the place looks so inviting, it's everything you'd hoped you ask, where's my sister? Your mom says, dear, Beth and her boyfriend eloped. You'd like to think you're enlightened. You'd like to believe that you're flexible and cool. Sure, things will change while you're away at school. But you worry the foundation you've been rooted to so long Is somehow less dependable, is suddenly less strong At least you're not like a tadpole One of three thousand eggs his mom unloads Who never gets to know his parent toads Yeah, at least you're not like that No, you've still got your footprint on that threadbare welcome mat and a place to hang your hat. So your life hums along at college and your worries slowly dim. Opportunities to go home become more rare. You hear mom has a brand new hairdo and your bedroom's now a gym. Your dad bought a vintage Chevrolet Bel Air. Then your sophomore and junior classes disappear before your eyes. And you're thinking about a life beyond these doors. Your old roommate is now your best friend. Your latest paper won a prize. You now manage all the college campus stores. Still there's a footprint you cling to. It's something you can't shake. A need that won't diminish. A bond that will not break. Your footprint, your history. It's who you are. And home's a place of comfort where nothing's ever forced Then over dinner with your parents They tell you they're getting divorced Then you have a calm revelation There's your world seems to blow up in your face you see that footprints don't belong in just one place They're in the life you've led But they're not firmly rooted They will multiply and spread On the path that lies ahead Yes, your footprint goes with you It's something you don't lose From the family you were born with To the family that you choose Your footprint, your history It's who you are And the universe gets larger And the cosmos will expand but one thing never changes Your footprint is right where you stand He made me a cake! You have to understand
understand. It's been a natural progression from bathroom doors to all doors. And windows and books and telephones and subway poles and elevator buttons and steering wheels and chair arms and pens and pencils and coloring glasses and plates and food. Food! Oh, God, food. Who has touched the food? Handled the food? I can't eat anything unless I make it myself. He should know better. He's seen the elbow technique. But he made me a cake. With his hands. I don't have a technique for a cake. If I bring her one red rose, I will smell her sweet perfume. If I bring her one red rose, she will gaze into my eyes. If I bring her one red rose. Flowers will shrivel, equations will thrive. Old Archimedes kept this one alive. He said that pi is always 3.1415. Chaos and order can never combine. It's far too risky when lives intertwine. There's safety in numbers like 3.1415. Nine. Some things you count on like 3.14159. miles per hour. Person B is walking at a rate of 5 miles per hour. Person A is moving with the general flow of traffic. Person B is moving directly against traffic. Person B is in the direct path. Person A. Person A is in my way. Person B's pace increases to 5.5 miles per hour. Person A is gonna have to move. Person A attempts eye contact with person B. Eye contact indicates submission must avoid it at all cost. Person A must step aside. Person B's eyes are green. Eye contact avoided. Power status established. She looks so confident. Push over. What? A thought hangs on her lips. I forgot to put on lipstick. She reaches in her bag. Oh, I hate this color. She removes the top. Cranberry kiss. Her pace quickens with the thump of my heart. Why do I even have this color? With delicate fingers, she lifts the red, moist stick to her lips. Applying lipstick on a crowded sidewalk, what could possibly go wrong? At this rate, person A and person B will make contact in four seconds. Out of my way, honey. I'll be a gentleman and step aside. Close in the gap, fella. But not too far. My arm and hers will gently brush. She'll turn with an apologetic glance. My fault, I'll say. <gasps> the lipstick has fallen. We'll bend to pick it up. Nose to nose. Allow me. I will lift the delicate silver cylinder from the concrete. I believe this is yours. Well, I hope it's not yours. She'll toss her hair. We'll laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Our fingers will touch. Coming through. One small step to the left and this moment is mine. That's right, you move. Just one small step. Damn, a post. It's me or the post, kid. It's her or the post, gotta shift right. What are you doing? Collision imminent. Get out of the way. Sorry. Damn it. Sorry, it's my fault. Asshole. You dropped your lipstick. Keep it. Person B continues on her path. Pace increasing. Person A can't move. She is my world, I live for her truly. We were I I want the dream that I dream. Dream. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 With I reach for your, your hand and hold tight. tight. I never
never really liked apples, though heaven knows I tried. Cause it's just weird to hate apples, so for years and years I lied. I never really liked apples, it's not a choice per se. I don't know why, I guess that I was simply born this way. I never really liked apples, though I grew up in Spokane. When all they've done is grown apples since the day the world began. So I hid my feelings for apples, it's a skill I learned to hone. And as I grew, I guess I knew I'd always be alone. But I've always liked oranges from my earliest memories even though there's no orange trees in Washington State but still I liked oranges it's an urge I was shy to admit to me apples were apples but oranges were it Well, I left home in the apples, I had passions to pursue. I started my own adventure and enrolled at NYU. I was shy and minded my business, then I might Mike one day. He seemed so nice, so I broke the ice and found the nerve to say. I have always liked oranges. Crap, what a strange conversation start. He said, dude, here's the strangest part. I like oranges too. We're two guys who like oranges Who were sent a clear message by fate We don't have to like apples Oranges are great That moment left quite an impression that moment a light bulb went off I remembered the years of repression And my memories that people would scoff All those times that I tried liking apples Seemed at once like a meaningless waste Then I learned there with Mike That you like what you like And there's just no accounting for taste now we're proud to like oranges And we walk with our heads held high Because I found another guy Who loves the things that I love And so did I We, we both, both love oranges. oranges He's so handsome And he's awfully cute If you're looking for morals, we'll give it a shot There are those who like apples and those who do not So, so whatever your, your preference, preference it's a big word Find, Find your, your favorite, favorite fruit I met Ricky Senior year in high school He moved from Seattle to fall In school I was invisible But Ricky changed all that We started dating And I'm not overstating When I say we were perfectly matched In the classrooms and homes me and Ricky always permanently attached And it was me and Ricky Every lunch hour Holding hands in the calf Me and Ricky Mocking the teachers You should have heard us laugh Sticky at the back 
for Ricky, I never had a boyfriend Guys just never saw me that way So when Ricky set his eyes on me, well I fell fast and hard I'll be there in a second For him I change my wardrobe and hair My friends they were wary Found Ricky kinda scary But they were jealous I'd swear And it was me and Ricky Cutting classes Getting high in the jungle Ricky left me, in fact he left completely I woke up one day, he was gone Took my wallet, my laptop, my jewelry, my phone and my dreams To prove that he was here, Ricky left a souvenir A little gift that can't be returned For once I was clever Got rid of him forever Lesson painfully learned And now there's no more Ricky No more reminder No more life played to it Now that memory's erased Now I'm picky with guys I meet like Ricky Now I'll make a new start They can hug me or squeeze me Do everything to please me or cut me Heart. My mom and I were always close I was an only child See, mom had lost three others Before it clicked with me She called me her miracle Mira for short 
And the love in her was bigger than the sea And she'd say, promise me this, Samira Enjoy your time on earth Always appreciate the wonder of your birth Promise me this, Samira Don't waste a single day before you know it, dear, it all will fade away. We lived a meager life, but me, I didn't really care when you're used to having nothing. You don't miss the things you lack. And dad was a drinker. Job. And one day he left and never came back And mom said, promise me this, Samira Never make a fuss Your father's journey is somewhere without us Promise me this, Samira Never miss his touch it only means I get to love you twice as much Mom saw no limitation of dreams for me But she I studied hard when I got lost, mom encouraged me Then in time I won a scholarship to the college of my choice Mom was so proud of me, she burst at the scene When she spoke I heard the passion in her voice She said, promise me this, Samira, don't ever look behind Right now, the future's yours to find Promise me this, Samira Don't waste a single day Before you know it, dear It all will fade away A few days later, Mama fell And dropped her groceries But inside, we both knew Something more was going on I prayed for a miracle I cried myself dry But six weeks later, Mama was gone Now and then I think about the things that Mama missed But instead of tears, my heart begins to stir Cause she's the one who made me see that miracles exist So I just smile and whisper this to her I promise you this, Mama I will make it through Cause now I understand the miracle was you I promise you this, Mama, I won't waste a single day And my miracle will never fade away
You can't make a cake without touching the eggs and the flour and the sugar and the cocoa and baking soda and salt and vanilla. He had to touch the whisk and the sifter or whatever. He had to touch the spoon to mix it dry into the wet and the scraper to scrape it into the pan. He touched the pan and the toothpick to prick it to see if it comes out clean. If he even used a toothpick, ah! So much touching. He touched everything with his hands and I don't know where those hands have been. I don't know where his hands have been. His hands! His hands! His hands that touch my hair. His hands that touch my face. His soft hands. His warm hands. His hands that hold mine. I know where they've been. They've been in my hands. I love those hands. I love him. He made me a cake with eggs and flour and sugar and cocoa and baking soda and salt and vanilla. He whisked and sifted and spooned and scraped and pricked it with a toothpick. The boy I love is in the next room, and he made me a cake with his own two hands. I'm going to open that door, and I'm going to have some cake. Okay, listen, my friends, I've got something to say. Just gather around, I promise later we'll play. I have to explain, things will not be the way that they've been. Things are changing for good, and it's time that I pilled you all in. You see, up until now, it's been only us five. But I think we all knew that this day would arrive. He's offered his heart to me, and for once I've chosen yes. I love him, but that doesn't mean I love you any less. You'll always be special to me. You'll always be my main obsession. You must understand that our bond won't diminish at all. But for this plan to succeed, there must be the odd sacrifice and concession. And I hope you can start to make room in your heart for your best girlfriend, Julie, plus Paul. Sure, you might say that he's not exactly a prize. There's that nasally voice and those watering eyes. He runs from the room, holds his throat, and then cries in the yard. He's just sensitive. It's something you'll learn to just disregard. You say that friends always get left behind. It's the friends who get hurt and grow bitter. But I say in this case, my friends, you're respectfully wrong. You say he's really not one of our kind. That he's hardly the pick of the litter. Look, don't judge him like that. He's a real pussycat. Can't we all learn to just get along? He may sniffle a lot, he may break out in hives. But like it or not, he's now part of your lives. In spite of all obstacles, true love survives. Wait and see. This is foolish, I know. This is silly, it's true. But I guess what I'd like is a blessing from you, Alexander, Bowser, Cookie Puss, and Miss Mew. And we'll be one big happy family. You, foreign Paul, my fiance. an illusion, ineffable, blind, numbers are structured, finite, confined, equations like pi are always precisely defined, and not some frivolous misguided notion, like how my life could change for the sake of just one flower, rose is a rose, is a rose, is a rose, it could be wonderful and strange, dancing by the hour, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And could it be relationships between two things or more in ratios? And so much more than one red rose. Who knows? Number. 
numbers are solid, dependable, true. It's amazing what simple mathematics can do. A rose equals a dance and a touch and a smell and a gaze and the hope of something new. But pi is exactly 3.14159. Two, six, five, three, five.
walking at a rate of three miles per hour, and B is walking at a rate of two miles per hour. Their paths do not intersect. Nonetheless, does B change A's trajectory? I stand here beside you and I look in your face And I see myself in your eyes Hi, sorry I'm late. I was at lunch and I got stuck in the bathroom behind this woman opening the door with her elbows. All right, work your magic, Sun Young. Keep it simple, no French tips. I don't want to waste too much money on a blind date. Oh, sorry about those cuticles. I've been so stressed about this date, I've been chewing at them like a dog. I don't know, should I go? Should I not go? Don't give me that look. I know what you're thinking. Here she goes again. But this one's different. This one's a physics major. Or... Is it math? Well, it's something smart. I haven't told him what I do yet. You don't tell a physics major you're studying art history until it's absolutely necessary. A physics major? Oh, wow. I've been doing some research. Einstein and stuff. I want to be able to talk about something tonight. Ooh, let me practice on you. You be him, I'll be me. I think it's amazing that light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Don't you? Did I sound smart? Oh yes, it's quite a paradox that the speed of light is constant despite the speed of the observer. I had to look that one up. Best I can figure it, let's say a truck is coming at us, and let's say I'm running away from the truck and you're running toward it. I'm not sure why you're running toward a speeding truck, but anyway, the truck will hit you before it hits me, right? Now, let's say that it's not a truck, but it's light that's coming at us at 186,000 miles per second. It should hit you first, right? Just like the truck? Wrong! It'll hit us both at the same time! I know! That's the kind of stuff I'll be talking about tonight. Me, an art history major, and him, a physics major. It's gonna be a disaster. That's it. I'm not going. Oh, Sun Young. How do you stay so calm in the high-pressure world of nail aesthetics? How does anyone stay calm? There's a guy in my class. We call him Mr. Golden Boy. He's got the most insane workload. He takes classes all day, and in his time off, he manages all the campus bookstores. All of them. But he's completely zen about everything. And I had this friend when I was a kid, Mira. She's had the worst life. Her dad was a deadbeat, drunk all the time. He walked out when she was like eight. But she was always happy. How do they do it? Maybe I should try that sun thing. You know, choose happy, create your own reality. This date will be fine, and if it sucks like all the others, this too shall pass. Hmm. Hey, that felt good. You know what? I'm gonna go. Oh, Sun Young, you've got the best of you. I could watch people from this window all day. Who are they? Where are they from? Where are they going? Scurry into your holes, lemmings. Ooh, check out Miss Power Hair. I'm doing my lips on the street because I'm too busy. She's going to run right into that guy. No, he moved. Wait. (gasps) She just ran smack into him. She was not going to move. It was either her or the post. Good choice, buddy. Good choice. Choices. Oh, I don't know, Sano. Should I go or not? How do you know what you're going to end up with? The last one showed all the signs of being something special. Great expectations, you know, until... You know where he took me on our first and only date? The Dairy Queen. 
at the mall. With that cranky girl behind the counter. You'd think working around sprinkles all day you'd be happy. And remember Mike. I made him the most amazing dinner. Candlelight, nice music, oysters. I thought, this is the one. Then everything went south when I brought out dessert. I mean, who doesn't like apple pie? And I guess I'm still getting over that a-hole Ricky from a few years back. How can a guy make you feel so good and so bad at the same time? But it's the luck of the draw, Sun Young. You can't win if you don't buy a ticket. I would have sworn my friend Julie would end up old, alone, knitting cat sweaters, but she told me over lunch she's getting married. Ooh, I'll send her to you to get her wedding nails done. I guess if Julie can find one, so can I. And this physicist seems like a good guy. I mean, he's taking me out for dinner and dancing. I told him, show up with a red rose so I know who you are. And he agreed. That's kind of old school romantic, don't you think? You talked me into it, Sun Young. I'm going. I'm going on a date with a physics major, and we're going to have dinner, and we're going to go dancing, and we're going to talk about the constant nature of the speed of life. Did I say life? <laughs> That's funny. The speed of life. Whether you're running from it or toward it, it hits you at the same time. Well, honey, if that's the case, I might as well run straight at it. Done already? <laughs> Time flies when you're having a nice conversation. Oh, Sun Young, they're gorgeous. Thank you. For everything. All right, wish me luck. Hey, maybe I should have got the French tips after all.
the ratio of the circumference of our circle to its diameter is known as pi. Pi equals 3.14. If I bring her one red rose, she will dance with me till dawn. If I bring her one red rose, I can hold her in my arms. If I bring her one red rose. <sighs> Roses are foolish, dancing's a bore Love is a concept that wise men ignore Numbers are perfect like pi equals 3.14 Dreams are unstable, awaken, they're gone An unscientific phenomenon Numbers are certain like pi is 3.14 one. What could be clearer than pi is with me she calls me her biblical mirror for sure and the love in her was bigger than the sea and she said promise me this mirror enjoy your time on earth always appreciate the wonder of your birth promise me this mirror don't waste a single day Before you know it dear It all can fade away We live to me, your life but me I didn't really care when you're used to having nothing You don't miss the things you love Dad was a drinker, could not hold a job One day he left and never came back And mom said, promise me this mirror Never make a fuss Your father's journey is somewhere without us Promise me this mirror Don't ever miss his touch it only means I get to love you twice as much And in time I won a scholarship to the college of my choice Mom was so proud of me, she burst at the seams When she spoke I heard the passion in her voice She said promise me this mirror, don't ever look behind You've got a chance right now, the future is yours to find Promise me this mirror, don't waste a single day Before you know it dear, it all can fade away A few days later, Mama fell, dropped her groceries But inside we both knew that something more was going on I prayed for a miracle, I cried myself dry 
But six weeks later, Mama was gone. Now and then I think about the things that Mama missed. But instead of tears, my heart begins to start. Cause she's the one who made me see that miracles exist. So I just smile and whisper. See this moment, I won't make it through. Cause now I understand the miracle was you. I promise you this mama, I won't waste a single day. And my miracle will never fade away. If I bring her one red rose, I will smell her sweet perfume. If I bring her one red rose, she will gaze into my eyes. If I bring her one red rose. Flowers will shrivel, equations will thrive. Archimedes kept this one alive He said that pi is always 3.141 Okay, listen, my friends, I've got something to say. Just gather round, I promise later we'll play. I have to explain, things will not be the way that they've been. Things are changing for good, and it's time that I filled you all in. You see, up until now, it's been only us five. But I think we all knew that this day would arrive. He's offered his heart to me, and for once I've chosen yes. I love him, but that doesn't mean I love you any less. You'll always be special to me. You'll always be my main obsession. You must understand that our bond won't diminish at all. But for this plan to succeed, there must be the odd sacrifice and concession. And I hope you can start to make room in your heart for your best girlfriend, Julie plus Paul. Sure, you might say that he's not exactly a prize. There's that nasally voice and those watering eyes. He runs from the room, holds his throat, and then cries in the yard. He's just sensitive, it's something you'll learn to just disregard. You say that friends always get left behind. It's the friends that get hurt and grow bitter. But I say in this case, my friends, you're respectfully wrong. You say he's really not one of our kind That he's hardly the pick of the litter <laughs> Look, don't judge him like that He's a real pussy cat can we all learn to just get along? 
He may sniffle a lot, he may break out in hives But like it or not, he's now part of your lives In spite of all obstacles, true love survives Wait and see This is foolish, I know This is silly, it's true But I guess what I'd like is a blessing from you Alexander, Meowser, Cookie Puss, and Miss Mew Sorry I'm late. I was at lunch and I got stuck in the bathroom behind this woman opening the door with her elbows. Alright, work your magic, Sun Young. Keep it simple. No French tips. I don't want to waste too much money on a blind date. Ow! Oh, sorry about those cuticles. I'm so stressed about this date I've been chewing at them like a dog. I don't know. Should I go? Should I not go? Don't give me that look. I know what you're thinking. Here she goes again. But this one's different. This one's a physics major. Or... Is it math? Well, it's something smart. I haven't told him what I do yet. You don't tell a physics major you're studying art history until it's absolutely necessary. A physics major? Oh, wow. I've been doing some research. Einstein and stuff. I want to be able to talk about something tonight. Ooh, let me practice on you. You be him, I'll be me. I think it's amazing that light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Don't you? Did I sound smart? Oh yes, it's quite a paradox that the speed of light is constant despite the speed of the observer. I had to look that one up. Best I can figure it, let's say a truck is coming at us and let's say I'm running away from the truck and you're running toward it. I'm not sure why you're running toward a speeding truck, but anyway, the truck will hit you before it hits me, right? Now, let's say that it's not a truck, but it's light that's coming at us at 186,000 miles per second. It should hit you first, right? Just like the truck? wrong it'll hit us both at the same time i know that's the kind of stuff i'll be talking about tonight me an art history major and him a physics major 
It's gonna be a disaster. That's it. I'm not going. Oh, Sun Young, how do you stay so calm in the high pressure world of nail aesthetics? How does anyone stay calm? There's a guy in my class, we call him Mr. Golden Boy. He's got the most insane workload. He takes classes all day, and in his time off, he manages all the campus bookstores. All of them. But he's completely zen about everything. And I had this friend when I was a kid, Mira. She had the worst life. Her dad was a deadbeat, drunk all the time. He walked out when she was like eight. But she was always happy. How do they do it? Maybe I should try that same thing. You know, choose happy, create your own reality. This date will be fine, and if it sucks like all the others, this too shall pass. Hmm. Hey, that felt good. You know what? I'm gonna go. Oh, Sun Young, you've got the best of you. I could watch people from this window all day. Who are they? Where are they from? Where are they going? Scurry into your holes, lemmings. Ooh, check out Miss Power Hair. I'm doing my lips on the street because I'm too busy. She's gonna run right into that guy. No, he moved. Wait, <gasps> she just ran smack into him. She was not gonna move. It was either her or the post. Good choice, buddy, good choice. Choices. Oh, I don't know, son. Should I go or not? How do you know what you're gonna end up with? The last one showed all the signs of being something special. Great expectations, you know, until... You know where he took me on our first and only date? The Dairy Queen. At the mall. With that cranky girl behind the counter. You'd think working around sprinkles all day you'd be happy. And remember Mike? I made him the most amazing dinner. Candlelight, nice music, oysters. I thought, this is the one! Then everything went south when I brought out dessert. I mean, who doesn't like apple pie? And I guess I'm still getting over that a-hole Ricky from a few years back. How can a guy make you feel so good and so bad at the same time? But it's the luck of the draw, Sun Young. You can't win if you don't buy a ticket. I would have sworn my friend Julie would end up old, alone, and knitting cat sweaters, but she told me over lunch she's getting married. Ooh, I'll send her to you to get her wedding nails done. I guess if Julie can find one, so can I. And this physicist seems like a good guy. I mean, he's taking me out for dinner and dancing. I told him, show up with a red rose so I know who you are. And he agreed. That's kind of old school romantic, don't you think? You talked me into it, Sun Young. I'm going. I'm going on a date with a physics major, and we're going to have dinner, and we're going to go dancing, and we're going to talk about the constant nature of the speed of life. Did I say life? <laughs> That's funny. The speed of life. Whether you're running from it or toward it, it hits you at the same time. Well, honey, if that's the case, I might as well run straight at it. Done already? <laughs> Time flies when you're having a nice conversation. Oh, Sun Young, they're gorgeous. Thank you. For everything. All right, wish me luck. Hey, maybe I should have got the French tips after all. Try a different no, I don't think it should be this lighting. It should be yeah. this way because then the sun will be coming. I like it if we or maybe in front of the lockers. Just, in front of the lockers. Yeah, okay. in front of the lockers. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing, so don't even worry. Okay. Don't question our methods. Okay. Just like it has to be like right in front of them, in the same place. Yeah. Okay. Could you look closer? Here. Like I was thinking, like this. <laughs> Let me put the phone in my other back pocket. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna ask you a qu couple questions. What are the questions? On a scale of one to Okay, ten. we have to finish. Oh, it's already recording. It's already All right. Recording. It's recording full time. Okay. 
Go ahead. On a scale of one to ten, how chaotic is this class? <laughs> Look into the camera when you answer. Um, I would say like an eight. <laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> What's the, next, <laughs> what's the next question? <laughs> what do we have to ask them? Uh, what's your favorite part about tech? That's a basic question. Um, I guess how it's how it's very hands-on and you can work together as a team and you can be really creative to work to put a show on. <laughs> All right. Who, who's the stupidest in the class? Why <laughs> 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 not? Um, <laughs> Or the most chaotic in the class. Okay, that's actually an accomplishment. <laughs> Nick? 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 All right. On a scale of one to ten, how chaotic is this class? Twelve. Yeah. All right. What was the second question? Who's the most chaotic in this class? Um, Nick, if not Kai. Uh, what's your favorite thing about it? About the chaotic? <laughs> no, about, about the class. class. The class. Oh. It's like a second family, like everybody's close, chaotic, you know, something that like doesn't happen in like a house. On a scale of one to ten, how chaotic is this class? Ten. <laughs> Who is the most chaotic? Nick. Also, what is your favorite part about the class? Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not prepared. I, I don't know. Is, is this, is this, oh, is it, I don't know. Can you just want to end this? Please. Stand up against the lockers. <laughs> what? Stand up against the lockers. It's like an, it's like the backdrop for everybody. Pulse from the ground. What? Do it. Just do it. We're taking a video. Go pulse from the ground. <laughs> All right. On scale of one to ten, how chaotic is the class? Is there scale to it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who is the most chaotic? Keegan. Or? Or? Yeah. There's another one? <laughs> All right. What is your favorite part about the class? The people around it. The people in Sphere Tech is pretty cool. It's great. Cool. <laughs>